Hello, my name is Roman Jindihashvili and topic of today's lecture is about the opening repertoire. How to build it and uh, how to choose the openings you want to play. Now, there are some openings that should never be played. They're simply bad openings. And, but there are some few of them, but most of the openings are very playable. Well, unless you go on the highest level, then the openings that give little edge to one side or another simply uh, uh, dispose. But for average player, or even, you know, strong but not the uh, top of the world level, opening repertoire should be uh, build, should have a custom build. And how do we do that? Uh, it's clear that unless you are on a very top level, there are some types of position that you'll, positions that you like and some types of position, position you don't like. And for that, we have to know what type, what opening to play. For example, if you are E4 player and big majority of the players are E4 players. Then on C5, well, on C5, for example, if you have already the openings that you very well adapted to, the way of Sicilian, the way you play against Sicilian, you adapted very well, and you know very well what you're going to do, then you shouldn't change it. However, I don't know any player that is absolutely comfortable in Sicilian with white or with black in every variation. This kind of player called nearly Superman of chess, and I don't think we have one of those yet. So, um, but if you are willing to play Sicilian, regular is one thing, but I would recommend to play this is the variation that I adapted. Uh, this is type of Grand Prix, except instead of bishop c4, uh, we play bishop b5. And it's positional and tactical at the same time. Now, of course, we're not going to go analyzing this opening, uh, you know, in, in detail, because that's not what our goal is. Our goal is to explain it, how should we build the opening repertoire. So if you are E4 player, you should have very good understanding of this position. And now I would like to tell you a little bit after E4 and other openings. Well, on Sicilian, I already made recommendation. Now, let's talk about other openings besides C5. So, after E4, suppose our opponent plays E5. We talk about different openings. I'm going to draw the parallel between different openings, and I want to show you how to merge positional and tactical ideas together of several openings together. For example, knight f3, knight c6, d4 in the bishop c4, knight f6, e5, d5. This is very well known theoretical position. And if bishop d7, bishop c5 is also a possible move, but what I want to attract your attention to is the positional idea of playing on dark squares. So what white is going to do here, play queen c3, and then after f6, play knight c5, and bishop d4, 
completely blockading the center and have a good grip on the blockade in the center. Now, this position is much better for white, and I don't want to go into details of it. Now, remember the position we just looked at, and now let's go to French defense. And now, what should we play in French defense? Of course, there are a number of different ways to play for white, but if we play against e5, the variation we just looked at, then I would recommend in bishop b4 variation here to play e5 and after c5 bishop d2. Knight e7 is a move. That's the best move. Knight b5, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, castle, f4, and then cd, knight f3, knight c6. You see, the idea is the same blockading the dark squares. Now, if you know how to play position we just looked in a scotch gambit, and if you are very familiar and feel very comfortable in playing a position with a blockade and centralized piece on d4 like we had on c5, in a scotch gambit, then you would know that this position is much, much better for white. And this is very important to know. Also, now let's get to different op now opening. Well, different opening is, for example, uh, after e4, C5 in Sicilian. What can we 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 looked a little bit in Sicilian, but what are we gonna get? How this Scotch Gambit and French and Sicilian? How will they merge? Now there is a move like E6. This is a very very bad move because we had a lecture last week about squeezing. Uh, a positional squeeze, but here positional squeeze will be also merging with the idea of a blockade. And there is a blockade and eventually white is going to end up winning the c5 pawn and it's going to be complete blockade on dark squares with absolutely lost position for black. Now, I asked number of players, good players, average players, and they very frequently tell me that, well, they play uh, this or that opening, they copy from the repertoire of top players, but then they cannot fall, they don't understand very good the idea, positional concept of this opening. So here the opening has to be built according to your taste. Not so much taste, so the ideas, positional ideas have to be as close to one another as it's possible. That's going to help you to get good position in the opening as well as uh, knowing how to play them. And now it's known that it's better to have equal position where you know what you have to do and how to develop the game than to have better position without feeling comfortable and making a bunch of mistakes and ending up getting bad position. Now that's what I would recommend for white if you are e4 player. Now for example now for a minute I want to show you some something similar for black. Okay? Um, something similar for black and 
well, for example, white goes e4 and we go c5. That's for black. Now, if you play Sicilian, now, I give you one, exa one example. Myself and um, uh, lots of my students and even colleagues, they play Accelerated Draken because I think it's a least explored and uh, one of the most progressive openings for uh, black. Accelerated Draken, g6, d4, cd, knight takes d4, knight c6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3. We are not going to go on analyzing this opening, but I have to tell you this. First of all, um, I know almost everything that was played, that exists, and all the ideas about it, and I spend hundreds of hours analyzing Accelerated Dragon with Ripka, without Ripka, and I came to conclusion that there is no way uh, White has White has no advantage in this opening. But we are not going to be talking about advantage or disadvantage. You see, knight on c6, bishop on g7, and then you go knight f6. So the type of position, if you play this position for black. That means you have bishop on g7, knight on c6. A lot of people, including myself, they like bishop developed on g7. So, and analyzing accelerated dragon, we are not going to do now. And now, let's look, on d4, for example, same people that like bishop fianchetto should be playing knight f6, c4, g6, and after knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3, castle, e4, d6. Because in a lot of cases, ideas, positional ideas merge. Now, for majority of the people, it may be difficult to understand what I mean, but once you take this advice and build your opening repertoire uh, according to the positional ideas of the opening. You should be a lot, it should be a lot more comfortable for you to play. Now, King's Indian is one opening, and the other opening you can play that also very similar to the positional ideas is d5, well, I don't know, cd, cd is not necessary move, either knight f3. It's Grunfeld defense. Now, ideas merge here as well. White is trying to, black is trying to attack the center and develop the bishop on g7. Now, accelerated dragon players should be playing, in my opinion, King's Indian or Grunfeld. And now, if we go back and lately more and more popular becomes Slav defense. And you see on the highest level they play Slav defense. I have to make one comment. First of all, today on D4 it's the most popular opening. However, I do not recommend you to play this opening. And here is why. I don't disagree uh, with the top players that this is probably the easiest opening to equalize for black. Maybe it is, and I believe it is. But when you play on your level, on medium level, this, you are not supposed to be playing openings that give you dull position. You're supposed to be playing openings with rich positional ideas and rich piece play, very dynamic positions. But however, if you play it and you already adapted it 
it's kind of silly to uh, stop playing that. So what the type of position you get if e3, uh, now if we go e6, e3, so this is kind of where black confronts white in its center and uh, doesn't like to give very much uh, the space to white in the, um, in the early stage of the game. However, there's not too rich position with for the ideas. Now, if you play Slav defense, then you should be playing on e4, c6, d4, d5. You see, it's same thing. You have confronted white in the center. Position. You may not know it, but positional ideas. It's going to be a lot easier for you to play Karo Khan if you play Slav defense. You may not like Karo Khan and you may like uh, Slav defense, but once you play Karo Khan, you may not li like something you never played, but once you start playing, it will be a lot easier for you to play because you will know by experience how to play these types of position with balanced center. The position may become a little bit static, but you will know what to do with it. This is not my opinion. Well, they, actually it is my opinion, but it's also a lot, a lot uh, uh, based on a survey I conducted. I didn't conduct real survey calling people I don't know, asking uh, most of the chess players, because I don't know how 16 or 1700 players think their way of thinking. But when I asked, uh, a large number of these players, when I asked them, uh, well, they they had, they give me almost identical answers. Yeah, they play these positions, they know how to play, and uh, but they don't really like it very much. They know how to play. They refer to first several moves. They know by the book how to play, but that does not mean they know how to play types of positions they get in the end of the opening. So that's why if you play types of positions that you know, it will be a lot easier for you to play. It helps a lot to have a very strong player to advise you to build opening uh, repertoire for you custom made. That's what I did. I had I have very few students, two or three, uh, but they're mostly my friends, but that's what I did with them. And now I see that they lot lots of times they outplay opponents that the two or three hundred points higher rated. This is very well justified way of picking up openings, of playing the openings, and of uh, 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 choosing them. And I strongly recommend you to follow them. Well, I, as I, as I already mentioned, I ask a lot of, even on the much higher level, on master's level, people sometimes have difficulties adapting to certain types of positions in the openings that they play all the time. Then they get a little different type of position and they don't know what to do. And they are confused and that affects the game a great deal. So, well, you may go ahead and try to contact me and ask me for personal advices how to build opening uh, repertoires. Well, I did that for uh, found 15, 1600 players, and I did this for world championship contenders, for world champions as well. So, because 
you may not be as good as world championship contender, but you will see a lot better where their strength is. So they have great talent, but you need brains to use the talent, meaning that you have to conduct this talent in the right direction. Then you have the optimal results. And I know this lecture may raise a lot of questions and a lot of uh, things may be very sketchy to you. And I knew that I hesitated, but nevertheless, I decided to bring it. It's very, very important to play openings based on your style, based on the positional ideas that you uh, know adapted well and play well. So think about it and try to get in touch with me if you have any particular questions. Thank you very much and I hope to be in touch with you real soon.